This week, the Cigar of the Week is very special. Uh, it is a 2015 Don Arturo Grand Anniversario uh, Toro size uh, from a 2015 release of the Opus 22 box. We'll talk a little bit more about that. <clears throat> then we're going to do Stogies of the Week, 724 Black Label Trading Company. Uh, I smoked uh, some Intemperance. I smoked uh, some other cigars that I'll talk about, including a Zulu, in addition to some Casa Fernandez, uh, Papas Fritas, and Debonair in uh, some of our Drew Estate uh, offerings. Then the interview with Jeff from Maya Selva Cigars will follow the Stogies of the Week. Stay tuned for all that and more on this edition of the Stogie Geek Show. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. yeah. Joe Hosempa, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. And Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Mm. Welcome everyone to <laughs> the Stogie Geek Show. I'm your host, Paul Asadorian, joined here in studio by none other than Joe Hollywood Hosempa. How are ya? What's going on, dude? I'm doing well. Can I take this out? Yeah, can we? we we're, we're really excited about our Stogie of the Week. Excuse me um, while I whip this out. I, I actually brought this <laughs> in for a, a client, and uh, we didn't get to it. Um, and I went into my humidor at home, and uh, <clears throat> my Opus 2015 Opus 22 uh, box, which retails for $975 and includes uh, 22 coffined, Opus X uh, cigars, in addition to some Angel Share, as well as uh, two of these cigars we're going to smoke today, the Don Arturo Gran Anniversario uh, Toro. Arturo Toro. It's an Arturo Toro, Joe. I like it. Are you excited? It smells the when you cut Delicious. it. Delicious. When you you can <sighs> smell it before, then cut it with that deep V. Mm, I'm going to give it the deep V. There you go. Once you cut it with that, and then, oh. I'm oh, it just smells delicious. I'm excited. Mm. So this is a special treat, as uh, Joel have some exciting news that we're celebrating now. I don't know if you want to announce it on the show just yet. But you announce it. It's good. It's for you. Joe's coming to work for uh, Security Weekly and Stogie Geeks collectively full time. I'm so excited. This it's, is exciting. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's it's been. I've uh, on the Stogie Geek side, I've been with you since January second. 2017. Yeah, just over a year. I don't know the number of what episode that was. I'll have to look. But uh, um, I can't wait to review my first reviews from when I started till now. Review the reviews, yeah. I think I've I gotten a little bit better. I hope so. If I not, you, the, you know. <laughs> I <think> you. If <laughs> At least not, I can pronounce fired. words right. Criollo. Right? You, wow. Yeah, that's, a, yeah. uh, that's a big one. That's some, some big steps, Joe. You know. It's from the. I'm going to light this thing. because It's I just, from the Jalapa Valley. <laughs> Jalapa. Oh, see, there you go. Right? Just, that's okay. Still learning. Still learning. <laughs> Over a year, still learning the, the pronunciation. Jalapa. Oh. Jalapa. There you go. Yes. I'm this. not going to give you my third one. I don't want to be. I'll just go one-on-one. -on -one. <clears throat> so know? this is from the 20th anniversary of the Opus X brand uh, collection. So it adorns uh, a secondary band that has 20th uh, anniversary on it. And uh, I'm excited to smoke this. Sorry, I'm just sorry. We're gonna get to the show. We're just we're initial. Mm. Wow. Ooh, it's like a raisiny kind of sweetness. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's really delicious. Um, so uh, again, this uh, the Opus Twenty Two from two thousand and fifteen. Uh, I purchased when essentially when it came out three years ago. Uh, and these having three years of age, I thought it was time to start smoking some of this stuff and reviewing it on the show. Otherwise, it's just going to sit in my humidor, and when I'm dead, someone else is going to smoke them. And so I'm not going to let that happen. <laughs> We're going to enjoy them now on the show. Some of these I will let age um, much longer. 
but this is not a very strong this is not an opus x strong cigar this is very much a, a medium mm-hmm. uh almost mild to medium for at the start classic taste on 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 the retro hail so far yeah a little bit of spice yeah, yeah a little spice yeah, yeah, on you the definitely retro. get the spice yep <clears throat> there's just an amazing amount of smoke coming from it too it is just billowing billowing smoke there is a a really long history about this Don Arturo Grand Anniversario line. Um, I thought that Cigar Dojo uh, in uh, January of 2017, uh, Steve Stevens did a review uh, of a 2016 uh, Churchill version of this and did a really nice job, in my opinion, of chronicling the history behind this line. Uh, I'll read some of it uh, for our listeners today, uh, giving props to... Uh, Steve over at Cigar Dojo, he says, uh, quotes a press release the, from Prometheus and Arturo Fuente, who collaborated for the first offering uh, of this particular line. And the quote from their press release is, Carlito Fu- Fuente has created a new cigar, the Don Arturo Gran Anniversario, in tribute to his grandfather, Arturo Fuente. They're made with the legendary wrapper leaves from Chateau de la Fuente, the birthplace of a dream. Um... Carlito made uh, these cigars in 2001 to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the Arturo Fuente Cigar Company, which was founded in, uh, by his grandfather in 1912. Somehow the math doesn't quite work out there, but uh, he planned <laughs> Welcome to... to the is it just me? <laughs> is it just me? Well, okay. you know. Just making sure. No, I mean, math isn't necessarily my strong suit, but, you know. I, I love it when companies uh, have been in business for seven years and they have a 10-year ten, ten ten anniversary smoke. cigar, yeah. I know, but yeah. so it's it's okay. well, we were thinking about it for those first three years. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, welcome to the industry. That's how it is. Um, so he planned uh, to, re- in 2001, he said he wanted to release uh, these grand anniversary cigars every year starting in 2002 to celebrate the 100th anniversary. However, these cigars were never released in typical fashion. Uh, at the time, these were seven-year-old cigars presented. Uh, oh, this, this, there was other ones says, these seven-year-old cigars will finally be presented in the limited edition Fuente Story Humidors promu- produced by Prometheus, Prometheus in 2008. It is the 96th anniversary of the Arturo Fuente Cigar Company. So if you're not confused already, you probably should be. Mm. Uh, yes. And so they were then... Uh, uh, so the MSRP, get this, on the 2008 limited edition story of Fuente Story Humidor was $7,500. And that was a grand corona of this particular one. So then in 2013, they re-released uh, an entire line and the MSRP was ranging from 23 to $26. Um, then in the following years, Prometheus included various uh, Vitolas in this line. The grand, uh, Don Arturo Grand Anniversario Destino Al Siglo, for those... Uh, paying attention at home is what the exact name is. Uh, I'm just going to call these the anniversarios from for this point forward because it's getting really long yeah. to say the whole name. Um, so there was a limited release uh, in 2016. Now they skipped over 2015 in this article. And so Steve, I have a uh, uh, addition to your post for you. These were included in the 2015 Opus 22 as well as the 2016. So <clears throat> now there's multiple versions of these special releases. <coughs> Excuse me. So the anniversarials were available in the 2016 Opus X Story Humidor. You know what the MSRP is on the 2016 Opus X Story Humidor. That's different from the yep. Opus uh, 22 and different from the Opus 6 Travel Humidor. Counting inflation, I'm going with 9000 You are very, very close. This has a $10,000 MSRP. Yep. 2016 Opus X Story Humidor, uh, 100 assorted uh, cigars. I guess we're in that humidor. That must be. Uh, that's some big bucks. So the 2016 Opus 22 release uh, was 22 assorted cigars. Uh, in the 2015, there was two of these Toros, and that was 975 MSRP. Mm. Which the you know that every once in a while I can, I can foot the bill. Maybe when we finish. This box. <laughs> we'll have enough budget to buy another box. <laughs> That'd be one that I think we can accomplish that. 
We might smoke them pretty quick, though, so we, we better get... Sam, we got to get budgeting. We need more of these. We gotta <laughs> get, yeah, we need, to, we need to do that. For yeah. sure. So, yeah, there's some pretty awesome uh, cigars that are included in this one that we'll, we'll smoke some of these on the show. Um, I definitely have another two in there for when you actually close your first sales deal. Which, I remember that. You lured yeah, that over my head. Yeah, which we still haven't smoked, which means you, get, you need to get to work. Mm, got it. <laughs> get to work. <laughs> I'm on it. Cigars are for closers, Joe. That's what I'm saying. I Cigars like are for closers. You, 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 it's a never better place for, uh, if, you're, if you're looking for incentive. Mm, that's you know? right. Cigars are for closers. That's it. So this cigar is just absolutely amazing. I'm really, I, I'm actually more impressed than I thought I was mm. going to be. Um, this is just delicious. So that's a little of the background behind this. Again, uh, I strongly encourage you to check out that article on Cigar Dojo, which tries to explain uh, the whole thing, which is really, again, really confusing. These are, of course, limited. Uh, MSRPs vary. Uh, I think when you when you buy them in that box, what does it, it work out to? Like $40 a stick, roughly? Yeah. When you buy them in that box. Um, so that release that was for that $23 to $26 was a bargain, considering the other ways to buy it there. Mm-hmm. Uh, almost double that. So, that's our Stogie of the Week, and we'll check back in on that. Uh, let's move into our Stogies of the Week, Joe. Scaling back a little bit on the cigar model that we just discussed. Yeah, right? right. Like, it's tough to compare. Like, we're smoking this really uh, expensive and very rare uh, cigar. It's a, a treat uh, for us, certainly. Yeah. And now we're going to talk about other cigars. Absolutely. Um. Oh, and of course, all that talking well, about this cigar, my cigar went out. Oh, yeah. Have a lighter. Oh. Does it have a fluid in yeah, it? I don't want to. There you go. I was hoping oh, not yeah. to. I got it. Thank you. I, I was hoping to have not have to relight this. but I had. I can't get off the stick. Full disclosure. I, I cannot get off the stick. Black Label Trading Company, Santa Morte. Black Label Trading Company. Santa Morte. Santa Morte. Yep. Morte. Yep. I'd say muerte, but... Of course you would. <laughs> My goal is just always to say it slightly different than you do, so I can correct you even the, if you're the right. The Italian version is Santa Morte. The Armenian <laughs> version is Santa what? Muerte. It's Morte? What is it? It's Dead Santa? Is, that, is it the Dead Santa? It's, it's named after the day, of, the day of the Dead, which is, I know it's De Los Dios or whatever, I get it. Sure. But the Santa Morte, that's it. We don't, I, I don't speak Spanish. Uh, sure. That much is clear. All right. <laughs> Next co-host, Spanish. Right? If you Eng are Spanish, English, if English is your second language if, and Spanish is your first language, we need you here we, on this show. We need you here on this show, right? Just to correct me, right? Because Paul has his own Spanish and it seems to work for him. <laughs> Black Label. There's definitely Paul Spanish and Joe Spanish. I had a pretty decent cigar by Black Label Trading Company. I'm not going to give the name, right? Santa Muerte. Santa Muerte. Uh, Corona Gord is the size of fi it's a five and a half by forty eight Ecuadorian Habano wrapper in binder. Filler is Nicaraguan, a little bit of uh, San Andreas and some Dominican in there. Complexity, definitely, I gave it an eight. Flavor and balance, I gave it a nine. It's available in two different sizes. Posted these on StogieGeeks.com, so you can check that out. Um, cream, cocoa, natural tobacco, sweetness to the end. And then at the end, it, it really kicks in uh, a really good profile. Box worthy, no question. Uh, it's definitely a box worthy uh, cigar. I've blown through a box myself. And let me tell you a little bit of background about my smoking habit here for Santa Morte. Uh, here on Stogie Geeks, we obviously smoke cigars and we review cigars. And so if you're looking for, if, if you had like a two cigar day, or, uh, you know, uh, if you're looking for a, a, a second smoke to, to get you in, in, into, into to really not have them all taste the same, if you're running through that, Black Label Trading Company, Santa Marte. Boxworthy. I got to try this stick now, Joe, that you said that. Yeah. Boxworthy is a pretty big rating from you. And it, it is. And, <clears throat> and if you're familiar with the Black Label line, I love the direction that it's going with the Killer Bee. And there's a hornet, uh, a green, a uh, killer bee, green hornet. It's different from the things. Kind of like uh, maybe 10, 15 episodes back where we talked about the 
Tatawahes, and then they came out with the Negotiants. To, it, it, to, to me, it's different than what their profile normally is. And, and the Santa Mu Muate is, <laughs> right? The, the, uh, the um, black label Santa Muate is, is like that. It's, it's not like their regular profile. Uh, you ready for the one that I smoked? You smoked these ones from Gran Habano? I believe they sent Gran Habano yes. sent us. Yes. This is the, whew, this is another long name. Mm. George Rico, STK, Miami, Zulu Zulu, Mas Paz edition. Uh, I smoked the black mm -hmm. Corona Gorda. Yep. Uh, there was a review on cigar-coop.com of the white. Um, and of course, Will is always very thorough and accurate, uh, which is awesome. Uh, he also includes the uh, black, which is uh, an Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper, Nicaraguan Habano binder, and Nicaraguan filler. And I smoked this last night, mm -hmm. and it was some just really classic flavors is the best way to describe it. Mm -hmm. Like when you lit it up, I'm like, wow, that's – and now looking at the blend profile, uh, it was that classic Nicaraguan uh, profile. But what was weird, which kind of threw me off, was they wrapped it in this Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper. So it's one of the two Connecticut's I smoked this week that really like they taste nothing like a traditional Connecticut or nothing like really many other Connecticut's uh, out there on the market today. Uh, and largely because I feel that that Nicaraguan filler uh, is a sharp contrast to that Ecuadorian Connecticut, which the wrapper wants to be smooth and creamy. But when you pair it with those fillers, you get that, that spicy and earthy uh, Nicaraguan flavor profile. And it was a different. It was a good departure for me. Uh, I liked smoking it. The Nicaraguan uh, fillers, very pungent on the retrohale. You get a lot of that earth. You get a little bit of that spice, a little bit of pepper. I really, I, I dug it. I dug it. I'd call this one a fiver. I'd like to smoke more of them than just, uh, than just one, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to, to give it a more uh, a fair review, so to speak. But... Um, in my initial impression, I would say this is a fiver mm -hmm. uh, and a good departure from some of the Connecticut's I like to smoke are more in that smooth and creamy, uh, a little bit of sweetness. This was just not that at all, uh, mm. which was nice to have something different. Yeah, and it's the, packaged. It's got like some, is that correct? It's got packets, uh, white, bl a black and white packaging, right? It's yes. over, over maybe 80% of the cigar. Yeah. 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 The, so that's the white. Um, it's like a, almost like a wax paper. Yeah, that they put yep. over it. Yeah, they put over yeah, it. Yeah, and then there's a band, a uh, Zulu band on yep. it. And just so you know, uh, programming note, George is scheduled to come on the show too. Oh, nice. So uh, he's coming uh, schedule-wise. Uh, hopefully, well, de definitely pre-IPCPR if I can give you a deadline. So, I, I, I again, I, I really liked it. Uh, Will actually rated the white uh, a fiver mm -hmm. uh, as well. Yeah, I, I, I had the white. I didn't have the black. I, I would. The white is a Nicaraguan Habano wrapper, uh, Nicaraguan Habano filler, Nicaraguan uh, filler. So yeah, that's going to be a different experience with the Habano, you know, Habano Nicaraguan Habano wrapper. Is certainly a sharp contrast from an Ecuadorian Connecticut. So mm -hmm. I'd be interested to try the white uh, as well. Yeah. So what else you got, Joe? I had uh, seven twenty four factory fifty seven um, format. I had was a Toro. It's a six by fifty four. Wrapper is Nicaraguan Habano. The binder is a uh, Costa Rican binder leaf. Filler is Honduran Nicaraguan San Andreas uh, or Mexican San Andreas, and a little bit of mixture of some Colombian tobacco in there. Complexity, uh, I gave it a seven. Flavor and balance, I gave it a nine. Uh, it's it's available in. Six different sizes. Again, light pep, uh, uh, black pepper, a little bit of mix of cocoa. Burns, uh, awesome. Uh, it's, it, it's a great stick. Nice, what I noticed about it, when you get towards the end, you get a nice creamy finish. Had a chance to uh, catch up with uh, Kurt from 724 as well. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. It's Sorry. Good, it's me. good to see that he's back in action um, on, on, on the road. Uh, Coming soon review, uh, he released a uh, Connecticut wrapper, which mm -hmm. was different from all of his line. And I had that yesterday, and, and the, the reviews will definitely be, be high for sure. <coughs> Have you had this uh, Casa Fernandez Organosa leaf? 
Is that a uh, tan label? I can't. No, it's a well, it's a Nicaraguan puro. Mm-hmm. Um, this was a five by fifty two repusto. I did have that. I stole it was that a, from a Maduro. Uh, y- y- did you have it in your humidor? Yes. I, I did take it at some point. Uh, <laughs> well, I had two in there. Okay, then. And I smoked one last night. So unless you smoked it last night or this morning. No, no. Oh, okay. No, the, well, then I can't see, I can't see the, the glare from the light. You know, this one has a red uh, footband. Which oh, no. I had the one with the top wrapper. Right yeah. Now. Yeah, okay. So this one is, uh, we should have pictures on the, so our viewers can see. Mm. We'll, we'll work on that, but. Uh, it has the, the red secondary band and then a red uh, footband ribbon okay. uh, on it, and it's Maduro. Uh, when you look at this cigar, uh, and even you know if you're doing this for however long, I think this is going to be kind of strong. Like just my initial impression, like like this is going to be uh, a medium full to full cigar. But what was interesting was it wasn't. It was very much a, almost a mild to medium profile. Um, great Maduro flavors. Had that nice cocoa flavor. Um, you know, like coffee notes in it. Uh, but it was really light. Mm. Smoke was really light. Like it wasn't a thick, heavy smoke. And the the body was really light. Um, well, I guess that means it's not thick and heavy, right? But so I, I would smoke this in the morning. This I, I, And I actually want to try smoking this one in the morning because it didn't have that heavy body or uh, a lot of spice to it. It was very smooth, uh, very flavorful. I liked it. I would also rate this one a fiver. Um, and, and want to smoke more of these for sure. And so uh, there's a whole a whole thing about the Argonosa leaf. I think we actually covered the Argonosa leaf uh, a few episodes back. So you can check that out as well. This was, uh, and this has been around for a while, and I want to say it was on a Cigar Fish Netto Top 25 uh, at, at some point as well. So what else you got, Joe? Gran Habano Black Dahlia. It's uh, the size is a Gran Robusto. It's a six by fifty-four. You have a uh, Criollo shade, grown Nicaraguan. Uh, that's the wrapper binder is a Nicaraguan Habano. Filler is Habano with Nicaraguan, Colombian, and a little bit of Costa Rican complexity. I gave it a uh, seven flavor. I gave it an eight in balance. I gave it a seven. It's available in three different sizes. I had the Robusto and the Grand Robusto. Uh, I have not had the uh, Corona Gorda size yet. But what I got uh, from that was uh, woody uh, with definitely some earthy flavor. Uh, Old-fashioned tobacco. I wasn't overly impressed, but it stayed pretty consistent throughout the stick. That being said, uh, the Black Dahlia by Grand Habano, I gave it a fiver. Nice. Have you had the Intemperance uh, EC? Um, no, I haven't. One of those? Nope. I haven't had that size. Uh, I smoked, uh, there was like a, a Corona Gorda type size that I smoked. Um, they do make it in a 5x50 Perfecto, which I want to try, but it's an Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper, Indonesian binder, Nicaraguan and Dominican filler. It is from Roma Craft uh, in the Intemperance line. It's there. Ecuadorian uh, Connecticut line. I really like smoking these. It's again different. It's a very different uh, Connecticut. I got like very different notes. It's almost like a an oak type flavor. Like it's some very distinct flavor that you get that kind of comes and goes throughout the smoke. Uh, the rest of the profile is more of a traditional Connecticut kind of profile, but there is like something in there that like holds your attention because it, 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 it in like every other puff you're like. What is that? Like, that's pretty cool. Mm. Uh, and that's why I like smoking the... Uh, Intemperance? Intemperance, yes. Did you From get Romacraft. Oh, okay, yeah. I got this at Joyles. Mm-hmm. Uh, they carry the Romacraft line, which I really like. I mean, I think Skip and, and Mike certainly do a, a great job over there at Romacraft. Yeah, from uh, what I've had from them so far, definitely. Good stuff. Yeah, I, it's hard for me to find anything in their line that I don't like, to be honest with you. Right. Like, all of it is just very smokable. I think there's... Most of their line is like a fiver, and then they've got like their real home runs, which are, are pretty amazing. Mode 5 is, is really good. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I smoked that this morning. That was good. You want to do another one, Joe? I have a couple more. You want me to go? Yeah. All right. All right. Go. No, you go. All right, I'll go. No, I'll go. No, you go. <laughs> uh, I can't get off of these either. EP Creo... Uh, EP... Uh, here. 
<laughs> oh boy. <laughs> EP Carrillo, oh, Edition Lim- Limitada, 2013. Mm. I've had the 15s. Where'd you get those? Uh, the next door. Really? Well, they weren't. Uh, they were until you bought them all. I bought. I bought a box. They're. they're and now you got to go in my humidor. I think there's a box of those in my humidor. Oh, <laughs> I think I found. I think I probably stole some from me. Stole some to make from sure you, you like them, and then like, you bought a yeah, box. Well, you know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know. Uh, I just a great go-to stick, and the the price point's awesome. Check your local tobacconist for these. Um, you know, the the they'll definitely cut you a deal for sure. Um, however, wait, so this is a 2013, is there a short run or a limited? It's the, uh, Edition Limitada. Mm. I like the 2013 short runs as well. I've, I've, yeah, I've, yeah I those, those are good yeah. too. Those are good too. Uh, for sure. I gotta remember which one this is. And see, now I don't feel bad because when we had Ernie on the show, mm-hmm. he couldn't remember what some of his limited editions were yeah. and he created them. Yeah. So yeah. I feel exonerated in that respect. This is a darker wrapper, right? Yep. Mexican yes. San Andreas. Okay. You yes. have a wrapper. Mexican San, San Andreas. Andreas. Sure. Uh, binder. You have uh, Brazil oh, yeah. I've, and I've some got Nicaragua. I've got a box of these too, now that I look at the box. Joe. Yeah. The, yeah. They have the short runs and then they have the, the, the limitadas. Limitada. Yep. Additional limitada. Yep. Uh, filler is Nicaraguan. It was released, uh, obviously, October 2013. Wait, did you say the binder? The binder was Brazil and Nicaragua. Yeah. And awesome. your filler is Nicaragua. The date released, obviously, it's 2013, but it's October 2013. Wanted to make reference that there's only th- they, supposedly they made only 30,000 cigars of this. Obviously, yeah. Edition Limitada, right? Complexity, I gave it an eight. Flavor, nine. Balance, eight. I mean, amazing stick. Uh, earth, chocolate, espresso, and my favorite when you do a V cut, when you get that leather component towards the end. Absolutely box worthy all day. So it's interesting. The original half wheel review uh, by Brooks, he gave it a 78 um, and said it was surprised at the horrible opening. These cigars would be a massive understatement. He says it seems to be the tale of two smokes, bitter and harsh at the beginning on all three samples that he reviewed. Mm. Uh, I, can I just see- think they needed to age. Uh, sure, I can see where, where they can pick up the. You do get like a, a, a slight bitterness for sure, mm. but it, I wouldn't describe it quite like that. But it probably just needed to age. I mean, think about it. If it's 2013, it's been sitting there for five years. Now he says the second two thirds were creamy and woodsy uh, and very sweet. Yeah. And so uh, I, to, I don't know what the. We've talked about this on the show, but I kind of feel like when the first third is harsh like that mm-hmm. and the rest is, is pretty good. That if you put them down for a few years, mm-hmm. that that harshness in that first third goes away, and and I forget exactly why it's something to do with the aging process. We've actually asked some of the blenders uh, exactly why that is. I don't think there's any really good kind of clear cut uh, answer for that. Um, you know, certainly leaf placement, maybe some of the leaves up front needed more time to age. Uh, although I, I got better answers in the past, I'll have to go back and. and uh, go back and review those segments. Yeah. But well, that's when you what get that bitiness and bitterness, the, 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 um, Manuela Noah said it's just the tobacco is not, it's not, not ready. It's not ready. Right. Yeah, that was the, I think that was the, the, the... It could have aged, but not enough age. Yeah. But now yeah. these have been sitting for five years and you can still find them. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, it's awesome. Now you make me want to go... Uh, now I've got one in there. Although this cigar is absolutely... Yeah. Oh yeah. This, <sighs> yeah. this is... I was just... While well, you were talking about that i was taking a moment like saying wow this is this is really good this is really good that's just delicious yep you get tobacco's the old tobacco sweetness um for you sure like a nice and sweet finish yep. on the palate too retro hail is amazing mm. and it's just like uh, is it just pouring smoke for you right now oh yeah <laughs> like <it's>, yep yeah <laughs> wow uh so i smoked the the pops fritas oh yeah what is the so? What's the deal with this cigar? We covered it when it first came out. Mm-hmm. Um, is it a short filler, or am I mistaken? It's tasty. It's very earthy. Yeah. I thought when I lit this thing up, I was like, "Good lord!" It was like I just took a mouthful of dirt. Not you, that not that I often take a mouthful did of. Did you dirt, like it? But did uh, you like the Papa's fetus? I, I did. I do. I don't know. I, I'm I'm on the fence about. The, I mean, I got the twenty minute. It's a good twenty minute smoke. 
Yes. You know? Yes. Um, so it's Connecticut Broadleaf Maduro, Brazilian Montefina Binder, uh, and the filler is Honduran and Nicaraguan. And so are these... These aren't short. I could have sworn they were short filler, but that... Papa's Fritas translates to French fries, in case you were wondering. Uh, yeah, they used to come in uh, in tins. I think these were... Uh, did I buy these? I think I bought these. Yeah, I did buy these. Um... So at this point, is is a composition similar to number nine uses a triple corda for the filler. What does that mean? I should know this. Anyway, I I think these are different. It's not something that is like in my profile. I don't think they're bad, but every time I've smoked one, including most recently, I'm like, this, this is a good cigar, and I can see people liking it. But the flavor profile, I think it it just tips the scales on the earth component for me mm -hmm. where I, I, it's not something I really like to smoke all the time. Mm -hmm. But I can, I can see if you like that really earthy flavor, sure, this is the cigar for you. Yeah, they're very earthy. Uh, I, I think if that blend was in a bigger size, it might not be, I don't want to use the word bearable, but I think it's, it's just a, I, I think they're, uh, if you're looking for some earth and, and you want good taste and you've got 20 minutes, uh, to smoke. I know some days for some people, you know, uh, it's, it's definitely a good go-to for sure. It's mm. a good second smoke golf course if you're into I'm sorry, it's two. tripa corta. Yeah, so the trimmings from the bunches of long filler cigars uh, are combined in other selected chopped tobaccos. Yeah, so this is a short uh, filler cigar. That's what tripa corta means. I should have known that. There you go. Anyway. So, what else we got? Is it your turn now? Yeah, it's my it's turn. turn. Okay. Yeah, I have Black Label Trading Company, Last Rights. I had a Robusto, 6x54 size. Wrapper is a Ecuadorian Habano Maduro. Binder is Honduran. Filler is Honduran with Nicaraguan. Complexity, I gave it a 6. Flavor and balance, uh, I, I gave them both 7s. It's available in four different sizes. Get a mix of black pepper and some dark chocolate. I was like, you know, it was good. It, it was a good stick. Uh, when I go back to the Santa Muerte, did I say that right? Santa Muerte. Yeah, I think yeah, so. Yeah, there you go. Close when, when I, when I go, <laughs> Close enough, right? <laughs> when, 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 when I go back to that, I'm like, wow, it, it, it just, it was more where I wanted to be, uh, flavor profile. But the <clears throat> Black Label Trading Company, Last Rights, I gave it a fiver. I did, uh, see, I smoked more Connecticut's than I, than I thought this week. Um, so I did the Debonair Daybreak, uh, which is the mm. uh, Ecuadorian Connecticut offering from Debonair. Uh, Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper, uh, Dominican binder, Dominican Nicaraguan fillers. I got the Toro size, was actually sent to us by Drew Estate. And um, this was really good. I've been kind of... Uh, on a, you talk about not being able to stay away from a particular cigar. Mm -hmm. uh, that's this one for me. Uh, th I don't know if this is necessarily the first cigar of the day for me. Uh, I have tried it the first cigar of the day. I like it to kind of be a second. Or actually, this is a Connecticut that I smoke later in the day. Like if I really want to have a Connecticut, but I want something with a little body mm -hmm. uh, and more flavor, this is it. Uh, and that makes this a very versatile cigar, uh, which I really like. Um, uh, I would buy a box of these. I would call these box worthy. I mean, the flavor profile is spot on. Mm -hmm. They burn, draw, like the whole experience you have when you smoke these was so consistent. Um, the inside label on mine said November 2017, so there's not a whole ton of age on these. I would like to see what they do with a little more uh, age on them as well. Uh, but this was very smokable, great flavors. Uh, so yeah, I'm calling it box worthy. Yeah, they might not make the age. You might have to get some more. Right. What did you think of this, the, the daybreak? I, I liked it. We did our uh, deep V cut. Love, sat there. love the deep V. Yep. Uh, and, you know, uh, and enjoyed it. It was, it was, I didn't know it was that new, like 2017. Yeah. You know, I thought it was a, a slightly older uh, blend, but yeah, it, it, was, it was a great Scott. I'd probably give it definitely either box worthy or box split for right now, for sure. It's definitely up there. 
and the price point's not not too bad on the debonair so if you've shopped them um if you've shopped them uh, a couple them, huh? uh, yeah a couple years back you might you might want to re, re rekindle yourself with that daybreak cuz it's the uh, i definitely think it's priced where it needs to be yeah, this price is uh, listing at around eleven dollars and fifty three cents oh. for the Corona, mm-hmm. which I, you know, again, the smoking experience I had out of it uh, definitely would, in my opinion, command that price. Oh yeah, right. Yep. There's uh, there's a big difference to your your four dollar bargain buy, <laughs> you know, Connecticut's mm. to this for sure, for sure. This is a more refined experience. Uh, then I find when, you know, I go out and seek out some, uh, Connecticut's that I'm buying at, you know, at a discount or whatever. Um, this is, a, I, I think the best way to describe it as a more refined experience, which I think is very consistent with the Debrunier brand and, uh, the way Phil is, uh, packaging, pricing and creating, uh, these cigars. There's a lot of, you can tell there's just a lot of extra attention that goes into the cigar, uh, versus a lot of other Connecticut offerings. And, uh, that's why, you know, it gets the, the, um, box worthy. Mm. So what else? So how are we doing with this cigar, Joe? This stick is 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 it it's it's in class on its own. It's a, it's a great experience. If you can find it, definitely recommend it. I mean, you know, you owe it to yourself to 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 treat yourself for sure. Uh, in regards to the stick, old tobacco sweetness, retro. It does hail. have that kind of like vintage tobacco kind of feel. Retro hail. Now that we're about halfway done getting that you know a little white pepper mm-hmm. getting the white pepper you know as opposed to the black pepper not not a lot lingering on your palate though it's not like yeah li- yeah li- lingering and for, a nice like wood kind of flavor yep like almost a not quite cedar but a wood kind of flavor yep what i'm shocked hill. about is for the amount of smoke that we're getting from it it's not a lot on your palate yeah so it's, i mean it's just like smoke. tons of yep. smoke i i love i love that in a cigar when it produces that much smoke and it's effortless and it's not too much where it overwhelms you. Um, but that cigar we were having earlier, I found didn't, wasn't producing enough smoke yeah. for me. Did yeah. you get that? From yeah. the, what were we smoking before? That was, uh, uh it was Miami. It's it a cell phone. Want to see a picture of it? It was that, uh, <laughs> I it I was a it. Miami uh, cigars. Uh, Arcanos, uh, no, uh, Miami cigars, Arsenio. You got it already? Wow. You're, you're I, I got that from yeah, memory. Yeah, you got it. Arsenio. Yep. Miami Cigars Arsenio. Yep. <laughs> it was All a good right. smoke, though. Yeah, it was a good smoke. I definitely... I mean, we paired it with a Bloody Mary, so... <sighs> Siri yeah. Oro. Yeah. Yep. Cosmerino Series Oro. Uh, Arsenio Series Oro uh, is what we smoked. And I, I thought it was good. I don't know if I'm ready to attach a rating to it yet, but uh, I thought it was pretty good. I don't think it was the Maduro either, was it? No. Well, we just, I apologize to our listeners. We just literally smoked this cigar right before the show. So, um, I picked these up at, at Joyce too. They're carrying the, this line. Uh, it was a slight box press. I think what we had was a Toro 6.5 by 52. Um, it's a Corojo wrapper, in fact. But it was very much medium bodied. Yeah, it wasn't strong for right? a Corojo wrapper. Yeah, yeah, and I didn't get a whole lot of sp- uh, spice. It was pretty smooth. Mm-hmm. Um, again, we paired with a Bloody Mary, so not the best cocktail to pair this particular cigar with. I'd like to pair it with coffee and see how it how it performs. Yeah, that's a good um, point. But too. I liked it. I would try it again. I wasn't sure. thinking of the cocktail part. Mm. Bloody Marys were good. I did. I needed a Bloody Mary today too. Mm. So we're gonna sit here and, and just smoke our cigars. I, I, I really, it's hard for me to concentrate with because the right. cigar is so damn good. It's very tasty. And I don't want to miss out on anything the cigar is delivering right now. It's very tasty. But in the meantime, coming up, we have an interview with uh, Jeff from Maya Salva Cigars. So uh, I don't know how long that we're going to linger here, but, um, you know, uh, uh, the second segment will have the interview. And uh, Jeff, uh, interesting, uh, you want to stay tuned because we're going to talk about what it's like uh, being a rep in two different countries, right? One of them being a France, and we're going to talk a little bit about some of maybe some of the restrictions in there. Sure. And then we'll we'll talk about uh, the the business aspect. Um, I'm gonna prequel, so you definitely want to stay tuned. I'm going to uh, ask what it's like 
being ultimately popular in a foreign country mm -hmm. and then you walk into a cigar shop in the united states which he's had seven years experience so, mm -hmm. you know what, what's it like like hi i'm my who <laughs> yeah you, you know what i mean and you know it's it reminds me i know we're talking about two different sets of cigars but it reminds me of like a villaga you know very popular outside Europe, of the right very popular outside the united states and then they get into the premium market with with the Talangas and there's there's a couple sure. other blends I'm missing. Uh, I tell you what though, my Selva cigars, yeah, love them. Like every single one that I've smoked, I'm like, I gotta get more of these. Yeah, I had a, a box at one time, mm -hmm. and man, I blew through those things. They just make phenomenal cigars to the point where other people were visiting the studio, and I gave them one, and like it created a buzz. Everyone's like. Where'd you get those, Paul? Like, how do we, <laughs> how do we get those? We need, we need to have those uh, cigars, and they're just. I've never seen them in a store. Is that true? I've, i in the U.S. I've never seen them in my travels in the U.S., and I'm mm -hmm. only East Coast. I think that's know, a shame because I really think they do well in the market. To mm -hmm. be honest with you. Yeah. So look forward to that. It's gonna be a good interview. Awesome. Well, with that, we'll take a short break and come back with our interview segment. Stay tuned. <laughs> 